Hey Life Group, hope you had a great dinner tonight. Hey, last week was awesome to be able to see everybody at the bonfire. Flames were huge, chili was delicious. May have uh, bitten into something a little too spicy for me, but hey, uh, a little more sour cream and that was it wasn't a problem for me. And uh, man, the cider, donuts, everything, it was a blast. It was great to hear some of the preaching out of Luke and to gather around the fire and worship Jesus under the stars. Wow, what a great time. Uh, this Saturday, we're gonna have another event at the Zoo Fall Farm. It's gonna be a little bit different. It's a hay ride, which is a big trailer with hay on it, and you sit on the hay behind a tractor, and you go around on country roads looking up at the stars. Hey, we've done it. This will be our sixth year doing it, and it's always a great time. Uh, there's a Facebook event. If you're on Facebook, please RSVP on Facebook so we get a, a better idea of how many people are coming out. Uh, if it rains, we need to uh, be able to change uh, the date of the event, so be checking up for updates. Uh, you know, it might change to Friday, it might change to Sunday night, so stay tuned for that. Sunday worship, we have worship at 10 a.m. on Sundays in like five different locations. Uh, you can ask your, one of the life group leaders there tonight if you're not involved already. Uh, if you have nowhere to attend on Sundays, we wanna make sure you have a place to attend, so please, uh, please reach out tonight and get plugged in for Sunday morning worship. Next Friday, October 9th, we are kicking off a game night. Yes, that's right. We used to have game night last year. This year, uh, because of COVID, obviously there's a lot of concerns with that. This is going to be at somebody's home on the May Road. Please uh, mark your calendar. You're not gonna wanna miss out. 7.30, October 9th. All right, well tonight we are kicking off a new segment in our Dinner and Discipleship uh, Life Group series, we, as a disciple, how should we study the Bible? That was our first uh, few weeks. Now we are looking at, as a disciple, how should I pray? And we'll be looking at the book of Acts for the remainder of the semester. The last four weeks of the semester, we'll be asking the question, as a disciple, how should I preach the gospel? And on my heart is that you would be uh, looking at these Wednesday nights really as foundational uh, stones in your walk with Christ. I pray that these are, these are really uh, building upon each other every week and that you're, that you're really uh, get, gaining a great foundation uh, as a disciple in the things of God. So as a disciple, how should I pray? As we're going through the book of Acts on these Wednesday nights, uh, I just want to encourage you to try to come out as much as you can on Wednesdays. Um, the Wednesday night material is going to be different than the small group material. So uh, there are small groups going on for these next seven weeks uh, that, are, uh, that are following a pattern through the book of Acts, but they're different. So if you really want to be drinking from a fire hose called the book of Acts, please join a small group as well. Again, you can talk to a life group leader uh, and you can uh, find out different times for different small groups that are going on uh, during the week. So for these next four Wednesdays, we are gonna be looking at examples of prayer in the book of Acts. And here's what I believe God wants to do in your life. He wants to unleash your ability to pray and he wants to increase your desire to pray. He wants to unleash your ability to pray and he wants to increase your desire to pray. Thanksgivings, praises, supplications, intercessions, uh, probably some of those big words you may not know. Um, Thanksgivings, but I know that give thanks, right? Uh, praises, you know, obviously praising God. Supplications, this idea of uh, requests, making your requests known to God and intercessions, praying for other people. Well, all these different kinds of, of prayer, you know, by his spirit, there really is no end to what we can pray to him about. Amen. I just really believe God wants to take the shackles off our prayer life. Maybe there's just a big clog. Uh, you find yourself struggling to, 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 to really connect with the Lord in prayer and to, to really just uh, let everything flow. Hey, I pray that through this these next few weeks and maybe just tonight uh, that that clog is going to be, be removed and there's going to be a great flow of prayer in your life. Amen. So I want to look at Matthew chapter 6. And a couple other verses as well before uh, we get into the word this evening. Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, starting in verse 9. Jesus uh, is commanding them about how to pray. It says, In this manner therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Man, unlocking your prayer life, one of the first things I want to encourage us to is inviting his kingdom to come. And if his kingdom comes, it means our kingdom has to go. Okay, his kingdom must come, but that means there's got to be room for it somewhere. If you're pursuing your own kingdom, uh, your own desires, uh, your own will for your own life, it's got to change. If his will is to be done, it means that your will needs to line up with his. Uh, it's just not going to happen otherwise, right? You can't have, you can't have hypocrisy. You can't, be, you can't have things going in different directions. Your will has got to be submitted to the will of God. So that's the first part. That's our posture as we come to pray is that we want God's kingdom to come and we want his will to be done. Not my kingdom, not my will, God's kingdom and God's will. A few more verses on prayer and why this is just so important. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Wow. Wow. Pray without ceasing. What does that mean? Well, it means to continue in prayer uh, all the time, all the time, constantly aware of God's presence and having that constant connection, constant conversation with God. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 says, uh, the Apostle Paul commands this, he says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All of mankind, all, all, all the people in, in the world, we are called to be praying for nations, praying for our leaders, praying for our neighbors, praying for God's will to be done in all arenas. Amen. And then 1 Timothy 2, verse 8. I desire, therefore, that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Man, God's call on the men and women of the church, in this verse especially, on the men. Guys, you are called to be men of prayer. First and foremost, I believe that we're called to be on our knees before the Lord, seeking him, uh, being dependent on him, making our requests known to him, giving him thanks, praises, uh, and, and, and praying to him about all the, all, all the situations we'll face during the day, praying to him about all the different people that are, that are on his heart and that are also on our hearts. We're called to be men of prayer, and that's how we lead. We lead on our knees as men of prayer. Amen. I hope that encourages you tonight. I know it's, it can be challenging at times to, to pray, but you know what? I believe by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, we can be uh, defined. We can look at our lives and say, you know what? I'm a man of prayer. I'm a woman of prayer. Maybe there's a blockage. Maybe there's something that's, that's just in the way. And I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will reveal that and that the Holy Spirit would fill you and that the Holy Spirit would give you utterance. The Holy Spirit would, would in a sense, unlock and unshackle your prayer life and that you begin to flow in prayer in a way that you never have before in Jesus name. Hey, peace in the Middle East. Love you guys. 